Hey, what's up guys? Nurse Blake here. It is the weekend and today I have on a special guest for CRNA week and I have CRNA Kathy. I will bring her up in a minute. So if you guys have any questions about becoming a CRNA or what her job is like, feel free to drop them in the comments and we will answer your questions live. And don't forget that you could also check out more of my videos on my YouTube channel, Nurse Blake, and you could also find me on Instagram. So welcome, 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 and drop in your comments. Here we go. CRNA Kathy, what's up? Hi, how are you? I'm good. I haven't talked to you in a long time. Now, Kathy and I actually worked together many years ago. She was a CRNA and I was a surgical assistant. So I would like clean up the OR rooms and then clean them after the procedures were over. And we, we became friends there. Yes. It seems like that was a really long time ago. That was. It, I think it was like six years ago or something. Yeah. yeah that's so crazy. And so that's where I like, I was doing that before nursing school. And that's what really got me excited about CRNA. It's something that I've considered um, becoming, and I know a lot of other student nurses and nurses, especially the nurses in the ICU, are always curious about what CRNAs do. So I have a lot of questions okay. for you. You ready? Yeah. All right. So talk to me about becoming a CRNA. How long have you been a CRNA? What inspired you to become one? Um, I've been a CRNA for almost 16 years now. Um, I was a nurse for five years before that. Um, Honestly, I was kind of switching up doing, I started out floor nursing and then I went to ICU, um, peds ICU was my specialty. Um, and I honestly, I did not even know what a CRNA was, um, but I met someone, she was a CRNA, I went and shadowed her and I was completely hooked. I'm like, I have to do this. So I finished up my requirements, you know, I had to finish my bachelor's, take a lot of classes like chemistry and stuff like that, that I had, you know, it had been a while since I had taken them. But um, yeah, and I applied to um, CRNA school and I got in. I couldn't believe it. It was awesome. Just That's awesome. Congratulations. And those of you who are wondering, what is CRNA? It's nurse anesthetist. Yes. Did I pronounce that right? Yes. Anesthetist. I don't know if I could actually spell that anesthetist can you spell it i can't um a n uh -huh. s t h uh-huh e t uh-huh i s t <laughs> did you have did you have to do that in your boards like they had to make sure that you could spell anesthetist before you became one <laughs> it they should have people try to say it that's more complicated i think than they would that's say. so funny what do you hear like the most common term like how do people usually say it when they say it wrong um they'll just say anesthesia nurse or you know, okay anesthetist <laughs> it's it's hard for some people to pronounce but that's so fun. like when i say it i have to like really focus on it and like really think about it before the words come out of my mouth it's not but uh, yeah but crna for 16 years that's awesome and it is crna week so happy crna week thank you i hope you get donuts i hope so please because <laughs> you're actually working tonight i see you have your scrubs on yes I'm working tonight. This is my third night shift in a row. So it's Friday. I know what those are like. So tell me what your schedule is like. What is the schedule of a CRNA? Um, much like nursing, you can have whatever schedule you like. Okay. Have, um, you know, where I work now, we have, you know, day shift, Monday through Friday, um, you know, weekend shift, weekend nights, weekday nights. It's pretty much anything you want. Most places are, you know, pretty flexible. So it's, much like nursing, you can make it work for your life. Okay, so you can work like five days a week, eight hours, or like three twelves? Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. And what schedule do you work? I work uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, night shift, seven to seven. Okay, so you're one of the weekend ones. Yes. Now, do you see RNAs also get differential? Yes, we do. That is that's a big plus, right? Yes, it is. Where I work now, it's, it makes a huge difference. So I'm sticking with it for right now. It's tough you know, not having much of a social life on the weekend, but. Yeah. Hey, you got the, what, four other days? Yeah. To go to Target, you know, hang out, Netflix, you know, binge on Netflix. Oh, yes. That's 
Netflix with my friend when I'm like recovering. So I love it. So what is the job of a CRNA? Like what surgeries are you doing? What procedures are you performing? Where I work now, I do mostly um, obstetrics. Um, so I do epidurals all night long. Um, you know, we do that um, where I work now, they do about 14,000 deliveries a year. So I am very busy all night with placing epidurals, giving anesthesia for C-sections. And then we also cover the main OR. Um, we may do, you know, emergency cases like ectopics or, you know, anything that may come up that's GYN related because our hospital is an OBGYN hospital. Okay. And when we were working together back in the OR, that was, it wasn't like a trauma hospital or it wasn't an OBGYN hospital. What kind of procedures were you doing there? Anything and everything. CRNAs do any cases that come up. You can, some CRNAs specialize in doing heart or doing neuro. Um, but where we worked before, we basically had to do everything. So one day you may be doing pediatrics. The next day you may be doing vascular surgery, um, the next day maybe OB, um, it, there's, there's no limit to what you can do. Um, there are no cases that we can't do. So, um, your, your options are wide open. That's awesome. That's great. I, um, so those of you who are watching, I have CRNA Kathy here. It is actually CRNA week. So we're wishing her a happy CRNA week and we're hoping she gets some donuts tonight because she is going into work. Uh, those of you who are wondering about CRNA school and you have questions in relation to that, I am actually going to have on a student or a uh, nurse anesthetist, so an SRNA, later in the week. I'm going to bring him on, Joe, on Thursday. So any questions about CRNA school, we will answer that then. But if you have any questions about what uh, CRNA Kathy's job is like, feel free to drop those down below. I know someone said we have Morgan here, and she said that is her dream job. So Morgan, go for it. If that's your dream job, you know, uh, go after it because we need more CRNAs. I know uh, a lot of hospitals are always looking for more. Definitely. Right so, uh huh. Right now, we're we're desperate for people where I work. I mean, there's the job market is fantastic. So go for it. That's good to know. Um, so tell me what your favorite part about being a CRNA is. I love that. You know, when I'm in the OR, um, you know, the patients are trusting me to take good care of them while they're asleep. Um, I like the fact that I can do the entire case by myself. Um, you know, we have anesthesiologists that we work with, but we're basically putting the patient to sleep, intubating, you know, giving whatever drugs, narcotics, anything. Um, and there's minimal supervision. So basically, you know, it's my call what I give and how I do the case. I love that. And I love taking care of just one patient at a time. So there's not a lot of, um, you know, running back and forth um, in the case that you're in. You know, you can just kind of focus on that patient and it's great. I feel like, you know, you can really focus on being great, not being, you know, rushed or anything like that. It's awesome. That's awesome. Now, I asked you what your favorite part of the job is, but we are getting a question in okay. from M. What has been the hardest thing you had to face as a CRNA? So what's the hardest part about the job? For me, um, it's difficult when, you know, you have a patient that's very sick. You know, we get patients that are already, you know, critically ill in ICU and they come for a procedure. Um, it's difficult, um, you know, if the patient doesn't do well. Um, you know, if the, you see the family, they're upset. Um, you know, it's unusual for someone to actually pass away in surgery. Generally, you know, that happens afterward um, if they're, you know, if they're in poor health. But that's hard seeing families um, lose family members, lose children, um, especially where I work now. It's, it's especially heartbreaking to see people, you know, lose their baby or, you know, that, it's, it's really heartbreaking. Yeah. So you do experience a lot of that. Um... So you'd say that's the hardest part. Yeah. So how do you prepare for something like that? Or what do you do after an incident like that occurs? Like I always tell nurses to like pause, take a breath. If you need to speak with anybody, you know, grab another nurse. If you need to take a break, take a break. 
it's great because, um, you know, where I work in most places, you're not on your own. There are other CRNAs there and, you know, you can kind of talk through what happened and, you know, get, you know, reassurance, like, you know, you did everything that you could have done and, you know, everything, you know, it, you didn't leave anything out. You didn't make mistakes. You know, sometimes people are just very sick and it, it helps to get, you know, that feedback from your colleagues, you know, that, you know, you're doing a great job that we've all been there. You know, it's nice to have support like that. Yeah. That's always great to have a good team around you. Um, and people like nursing, um, you, you could be, get so busy with your own patients. You kind of feel like you can, it could be lonely, but you can't forget you have a huge team around you. And if you ever need anything, go talk to your team. That's what they're there for. Yes. I'm getting a question from Frankie. Okay. What level of autonomy do CRNAs really have? It depends where you work. Um, where in Florida, there are mostly anesthesia care team models, which is, you know, you have some anesthesiologists, um, generally, you know, they may supervise uh, four CRNAs at a time. So there may be four surgeries going on and the CRNAs are doing those cases and then the anesthesiologist, um, you know, is there to help, um, you know, if you need two sets of hands or, you know, if there's a problem, um, you know, we all kind of brainstorm together whenever things are going on. But for the most part, um, you're on your own doing the cases. Um, there are some places, especially in rural areas, um, where there is critical access um, to hospitals. People don't have, you know, like in Orlando, a big um, selection of places they can go. There may just be one small hospital. And a lot of those places, uh, CRNAs are the only uh, anesthesia providers. Um, so your autonomy is 100% in those places. Um, it just depends on the state that you work in and the kind of job that you take. Okay, thanks for answering. You wanna take a little water break? Yes. Let's take a water break and then we could chat. So how is everything going? So you're still in Orlando? Yes, I, you know, I've lived here my entire life. So it's home for me, it's a great place to live. That's the, the home of Disney, Mickey Mouse. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so tell me about, um, I know you work at a hospital, but are you employed by that hospital or are you employed by like a third party agency? So you're a contractor. We are employed by an anesthesia group. Um, okay. Our anesthesia group is part of an even bigger group, you know, like a corporation that owns a lot of anesthesia groups. So we're contract employees. We're not hospital employees. Um, so we get privileges, um, you know, to work at the hospital, but we aren't employed by them. Okay, I got another question. I know this is a question more related to CRNA school, but maybe we can help Jason out. Sure. Jason said, after you graduated with your bachelor's, how long did it take before you were accepted into the program? Honestly, it was um, maybe six months just because of the way that it worked out. I finished um, my bachelor's and I applied right away to CRNA school because it started in January. Like I think I graduated in May and then I applied for the January class and I got in. Okay. Awesome. And how, how hard was CRNA school? It is really tough. Um, you know, it's difficult, the material, you know, the things that you're learning, they're much different than anything you've done in nursing. I mean, there are some things, you know, basic things are, um, you're going to use always, but, you know, anesthesia specific things, it, it takes a lot, um, a lot of studying, a lot of clinical time. Um, and it was, it's rough, um, especially if you've got kids or, you know, other responsibilities, it's, it's difficult to juggle. It can be done, but it, it can be very stressful at times. Okay. Uh, so if you, anyone is interested in CRNA school, do it, do it. Like uh, Kathy said, they need more CRNA. So yeah. Can you speak about the job market and what that looks like? Here where I live um, right now, there is a shortage of CRNAs. Um, okay. We have several anesthesia schools in the area that are graduating um, new students, but you know, where Orlando is kind of like a transition place for a lot of people, you know, they yes. come for a couple years and then go somewhere else. Um, so I have not had any time during my 16 years where there weren't jobs available right around the corner. 
Oh, that's good to know. Yeah. For sure. Especially after you spend like so much time and money in school, you want to know that there's a job available for you. Yes. Those student loans can be um, humongous. So. (laughs) Yeah, I bet. I can only imagine. In CRNA school, how long was it? It was 27 months. Um, Okay. Oh, okay. Long. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like nursing all over again. Two years. Yeah. So I want to know when you're in a surgery, like how long are surgeries? Like what's the longest surgery you've been in? And then what are you typically doing during that time? Um, The longest surgery I think I've been involved in um, was about 15 or 16 hours and they weren't even finished when I left. So um, some of them are extremely long um, depending on what they're doing. Um, So you never know. You may be in a case that lasts 15 minutes or you might be there for your entire shift. Um, I forgot your other question. Oh, um, so what do you typically do when you are in a surgery? um, What what are you typically doing? Can you walk us through that? What's that look like? Um, You know, generally you go get the patient from pre-op holding. You give some sedation just to help them feel more relaxed to go back, some, you know, medicine. And then um, when you get to the operating room, Um, you know, we give them the medicine to go to sleep, uh, put in a breathing tube if that's what they need. Um, They're going to be, you know, uh, sometimes we have people breathing on their own. They may be ventilated with a ventilator, depending on the kind of surgery. So we're adjusting the anesthetic the whole time. Um, We watch vital signs very closely. Um, You know, we're responsible for the patient's safety as far as the position of the patient, you know, make sure that everything's padded and that their, you know, face is protected. You know, there are many responsibilities as far as that goes. And, um, you know, we're just like monitoring constantly. That's, you know, and making adjustments. You treat the blood pressure, adjust the anesthetic down or adjust up, give narcotics, you know, whatever needs to be done. Um, you know, so you're, you're basically looking at your monitor a lot. And you're working closely with the doctor and other nurses in the room? Yes. It, the surgeons, um, you know, we spend a lot of time, you know, talking to them, like what's going on, what do you think, you know, if the patient's bleeding, you know, what do we need to be doing, should I get blood available, Um, it's, you know, constant communication with the surgeon, Um, you know, the scrub tech, the OR nurse, we're all kind of working together um, to do the best for the patient. I love working in the OR. It was just so much fun working with everybody and the teamwork and just the different procedures and surgeries I got to see was just so much fun. I I loved it. I kind of miss it. You know, it's great. I really didn't have any idea that, you know, it could be so fun because, you know, if you have like the patient's totally stable, not a lot going on, you know, we got the, the music bumping and, you know, we're having a good time chatting and, you know, having a great time with the you know certain surgeons and certain yeah. like really fun so it, it can be like a really nice day yeah i love that i do miss it i miss it. and tell everyone in orlando i said hello i will we miss you i it's i was so happy to see you um that you're doing this stuff because i was like oh there's blake <laughs> yeah i love it and we're getting so much engagement here so i have a few more questions can i keep you on a little longer Perfect. And we may repeat some questions because other people are just chiming in. And if you are new and you're watching us live, it is CRNA week. So this is a perfect time. I decided to interview CRNA Kathy and she's been a CRNA for 16 years, has so much experience. And we actually worked together in the OR about eight years ago. So I'm so happy she's here. Um, and uh, Frankie has a question. Hey, Why did you choose CRNA versus MP or midwife? I didn't really know anything about being a midwife, honestly. Um, so that didn't even cross my mind. Um, I thought about nurse practitioner, um, but the idea of being in an office, um, you know, Monday through Friday, seeing patients, um, it just wasn't that appealing to me. And I know there are other practice settings for nurse practitioners. Um, you know, there are many choices, but for me, I really liked what I saw when I went to shadow with CRNA, um, you know, it requires a lot of critical thinking and, um, you know, I just felt like it would be a great challenge and, you know, you're never, it's never boring. You know, you're not hanging out in the office, just, you know, 
seeing people all day. Some people love that, but for me, I need a little bit more excitement. <laughs> uh, is there anything you miss about floor nursing? No, <laughs> I do not. <laughs> <laughs> so you love your job now, which is which is so great, which, which is awesome. Because there's so many different things beyond bedside or floor nursing that nurses can do. And especially when nurse, nursing students come out of nursing school, they go straight to the bedside. Um, and they don't really know what other opportunities they have, which is why I'm so happy that you're here because each week I actually want to bring in a new nurse to go live with me so I can interview from a different background and field, whether that be like case management or school nursing, because there's so many different opportunities. Definitely. So what is your advice to someone who wants to become a CRNA and they're a floor nurse now? Get yourself into an ICU. Um, that's the first step. Um, you know, you need to get some good experience under your belt. So if you can get into a CVICU or a trauma ICU, um, that's where you're going to get really good experience um, dealing with people that are very sick and, you know, monitor, you know, your drips and all that kind of stuff. Um, you get the best experience that way, I believe. Um, and if you don't have a bachelor's, you know, get your bachelor's done. Um, and just, you know, ask around other CRNAs, you know, what the job market is in your town, um, or where you live or where you're planning on living, just to see, you know, what kinds of cases you might be doing or what's expected of you. Um, and then, you know, when you go to school, um, it's, you're going to learn so much in such a short period of time. Um, I bet. Seven months seems long, um, but, you know, when you're actually doing it, it kind of flies by. But, um, you know, just get in there and just soak it up and enjoy it and learn as much as you possibly can. Um, I feel like I always tell the students that, like, get in there, get dirty, watch stuff, do stuff, because um, you're going to be really well-rounded when you finish. Yeah, that's awesome. Oh, we actually have a question about nursing school. I'm going to read it to you. Um, I'm in my second week of CRNA school. That's awesome. Congratulations. Uh, uh, and Kathy, do you have any advice on time management and getting through the program? And then what helped you the most to get through school? So time management and then what helped you get through the 27 months? You definitely have to um, kind of block out your time for studying. Um, you know, I was getting up at like three or 4 a.m. to study before I went to clinicals. And then, you know, while I was at lunch, I'm looking at like flashcards, anesthesia flashcards. And then um, it was really great to do study groups, especially in the beginning where you're taking a lot of, um, you know, just doing a lot of classroom learning. And it was great to um, be with a lot of other CRNA students so we could kind of, you know, help each other out. Um, so if you can get in with a good group of people that are in your program to, um, you know, kind of get together, study, and also go out, you know, have drinks, whatever, like to decompress, it's great to have that kind of support and just let your family know that you're going to be very busy. Um, so people don't really understand until they're in it. Um, it's hard to explain to, you know, your family or your friends, like, look, this is like a full-time commitment. This is like I'm eating, sleeping, breathing this all the time. So just try to... Right. Uh, we're getting another one um, from Adrian. Hey, Adrian. Uh, can one become a CRNA straight from enrolled nursing? Uh, enrolled nursing, I'm assuming that's maybe nursing school or even floor nursing. But I know from nursing school, you have to go and get experience in ICU critical care first. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of people, I think, you know, they want to become a CRNA, so they go to nursing school, and, you know, there are these fast-track programs where you can get done really quickly, and then, you know, they bounce into an ICU for a year, and then they go to CRNA school. Um, and that's great. Some people do that, and they do really well, but um, it's generally you need at least one to two years of ICU experience, um, and that's going to help you be a better CRNA, so it's not something you want to, you know, try to skimp on. Um, so no, you can't do that straight out of nursing school. And how long were you a nurse before you became a CRNA? Five years. Five years. Now, when you graduated nursing school, did you know you wanted to become a CRNA or did that happen somewhere in between the five years? No, I didn't even, 
I had no idea what a CRNA was or did. Um, you know, I was just kind of feeling my way along. So um, I, I happened to meet a CRNA and I went and shadowed with her. And that's how I found out about CRNAs. Um, you know, I didn't even know they existed, honestly. <laughs> and uh, did you work while going through CRNA school? No, it is very difficult to do so. Um, I think now they have stricter uh, limits on the hours, the clinical hours that you can do. But, um, you know, we were working like staff in the operating room as students, working 50, 60 hours a week. Um, so there was really no time or energy um, to work on the side. Okay. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Happy CRNA week. I know you're running off to work because you have a long 12 hour shift tonight. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much. Tell everyone I said hey and I miss you. Next time I come to Orlando, we'll get coffee. Yes, for sure. All right, I'll chat with you later. Okay, thanks, Blake. Bye. Hey, guys. Thank you so much for watching. What a special treat to have CRNA Kathy on with us. I'm Nurse Blake. Uh, feel free to comment your questions in this video if you're watching later, and I or CRNA Kathy will help answer your questions. And if you want to find more videos, check me out on YouTube youtube.com backslash nurse Blake. You could also find me on Instagram. And if you're a nurse or a nursing student, I have a link of my favorite nursing gear. So make sure you check that out. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will chat. Oh, oh, one more thing, one more thing. I am actually gonna have a SRNA, a student CRNA here with me live on Thursday. His name is Nurse Joe. He is currently going through the CRNA program. So I'm so happy to have him on. So if you have any questions about what it's like going through CRNA school, make sure you check us out on Thursday. All right, guys, chat with you later. Bye.